revised to set the tactics of war. Suspended for the duration is the code of sportsmanship. Now there is only one rule, to win. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is not a sport. It is designed for the emergency when your life may depend upon the ability to outwit or overcome an armed enemy, perhaps with only your two hands. These tactics of defense and counterattack combine the essential elements of jiu-jitsu, savat, American wrestling, and plain rough-and-tumble fighting. So first, let us examine some of the basic fundamentals. The basic body stance is one of easy balance, deceptively relaxed, yet actually always ready for quick counterattack. Arms are held lightly across the chest or spread with hands on hips. From either position, they are shifted instantly to meet an assailant's lead. Feet are slightly spread and firmly balanced. They must never be crossed, but always ready to shift or pivot according to the character of the maneuver. Blows are delivered with the knife edge of the hand to the points of greatest vulnerability. These primary vital points include the side of the neck midway between chin and ear, just under the jawbone, the larynx, or so-called Adam's apple, the bridge of the nose, the upper lip just at the juncture with the nose, the back of the neck at juncture of skull and spine, the kidneys at the lower edge of the ribs. The solar plexus, which may be attacked either with the edge of the hand or with the point of the hand in a straight jab. This straight jab is well adapted to a blow at the Adam's apple or in a direct attack to the eyes. One of the most vulnerable of all vital points is the groin, where even a light blow is capable of complete incapacitation. Attack strategy utilizes the feet to stamp on an opponent's arch, to deliver a sharp blow to the shin or to the groin. The knee is also a weapon of counterattack, striking into the groin, into the face of an opponent when bent over, or into the solar plexus. Basic hand holds and leverages are designed to take greatest advantage of leverage on joints and bones. This is the wrist lock, holding the opponent's wrist in both hands. The thumbs exert pressure on the back of the hand forcing the wrist joint backward and outward at the same instant. Another primary hold is the reverse wrist lock. The opponent's hand is twisted inward. As the elbow rises, additional leverage is applied at the elbow. Any resistance on the part of the opponent only increases the pain and the effectiveness of the hold. Twisting the hand inward imposes terrific leverage on the wrist. Pressure against wrist locks the elbow. A hammer lock with the addition of downward pressure for forcing the wrist joint. In this basic headlock, one arm is passed around the opponent's neck and locked over the other arm, while one hand is utilized to control the opponent's head. Any attempt to escape only tightens the hold. Simple strategy in forcing the back is the application of leverage. With one hand holding the belt and the other applying pressure at the throat, or with one arm around the waist exerting leverage at the chin. Forcing the knee is an elementary hold which recurs in different adaptions in a wide variety of... in American youth is the zest and aptitude for rugged athletics. On the playing fields, in gymnasiums, in teamwork and individual exploits have then developed attributes of body and mind, skills and techniques which have made Americans outstanding in man-to-man -man competitions. Long trained and inspired to excel in all the bills, sports and games, we've always played to win without pulling any punches but always in strict accordance of the rules of sportsmanship and gentlemanly conduct. 
Today, as we face enemies who recognize no fair play, the technique of man-to-man -man competition must be drastically revised to fit the tactics.